Pay close attention. The news you're about to see is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, in our news today, we're going to talk about the latest in the fight against the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple countries being hit extremely hard, Brazil being one of them, where they're expecting the uh, deaths to actually surpass the births mm -hmm. for the first time ever. So their, their, their country... The Brazilian people are getting very hard, second only to India, mm -hmm. that is uh, still even suffering worse at this time. Right. So we'll have those details as well as Ukraine and Russia along the border there, both mm -hmm. countries being primed for war, uh, their military buildup. We'll have those details. And a sad story out of Guatemala at, uh, after back-to-back -back hurricanes hit that country. Now the people there forced to make a s extremely long trek to the United States in hopes for a better life or survival. Uh, but first we're going to talk about this new, the, the new UK variant that has uh, right. hit the United States very hard. Mm -hmm. And this new and alarming setback uh, to report in the fight against COVID. The variant first discovered in the UK is now the dominant strain in the US mm -hmm. according to the CDC. And what's worse, um, it seems to be spreading greatest among children. Now this variant is 50% more transmissible than the original strain. Some are actually saying as high as 70% uh, more transmissible uh, than the original strain of the coronavirus and is thought to be the cause of the fourth surge that we're now seeing. Yeah, so we're kind of seeing both of those, all the age ranges cover from That's the right. first strain we had. It covered more of the older people. Mm -hmm. Now these newer strains are attacking even younger children. That's wow. right. While more and more older Americans are getting vaccinated, it seems more and more younger people are getting hospitalized. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky reported across the country, we are hearing reports of clusters of cases associated with daycare centers and youth sports. Well, the highest positivity rate is now in children ages 12 to 17. So in light of this new development, the CDC is warning students to refrain from indoor sports and large gatherings. The new surge is densely populated in just five states where 44% of new COVID cases have been discovered. As we've reported recently, there are still concerns over the AstraZeneca vaccine causing blood clots. Now, in 20 million shots received, blood clots occurred in 79 cases. So while it seems to be a, a very small risk for the occurrence, the executive director for the European Medical Agency, Emmer Cook, says blood clotting following the AstraZeneca vaccine should be listed as possible side effects of the vaccine. Now, researchers at Chan Soon Shiong Institute for Medicine in Los Angeles are working on breakthrough technology that could lead to the first vaccine put in the pill. Dr. Tara Siri, a clinical trial physician, says uh, to have a vaccine that's room temperature and that could be a pill is life changing. While the United States is vaccinating an average of 3 million people each day, they are still facing setbacks. One example is in Maryland, where people stood and sat in extremely long lines to get their shot, but many were turned away at the end. Well, but with cases in children inc increasingly uh, rapidly, there will be a new push to get them vaccinated so they can get back to school. Now, over the last year, with uh, most schools shut down, it has been frustrating for many young students. Now, the latest issue of Time magazine sums it up how many feel, in three words, the lost year. Well, 17-year-old Twyla Joseph is on the cover. She told CBS Evening News, I don't get to take, I didn't get to take my SATs. Uh, they kept 
getting canceled. Am I going to go to college? Am I going to have a job? Just sitting at home on your laptop every day, it makes you depressed, it makes you feel lonely, it makes you feel unmotivated. While the UK variant has been shown to be more contagious and potentially more deadly than its predecessor, new research coming out shows uh, this virus is affecting people's mental well-being as well as their physical health. A UK study found one in three COVID survivors suffered neurological or mental disorders within six months after infection. 17% um, of patients develop anxiety, 14% experience mood disorders, and of those treated in the ICU, 7% suffered a stroke, and nearly 2% were diagnosed with dementia. Mm. Well, a former Marine and COVID survivor, Ivan Egerton, told CBS this morning about his mental challenge, saying, It instantly, like a light switch, I felt this intense paranoia hit me. I couldn't escape it, he said. Every single person that I saw would trigger this intense fear. My rational mind was still intact, and I thought, this is absolutely crazy. What's happening to me? This isn't real. This can't be real. So that's just one example of someone uh, experiencing those uh, uh, mental uh, difficulties from having COVID. Hmm. Well, Ivan's experience is not an isolated case as doctors are now linking this condition to COVID. University of Oxford professor Paul Harrison essentially said, uh, he said essentially a third of the patients in our uh, 230,000 patients uh, after COVID had one or more psychiatric or neurolo neurological diagnosis. Well, patients were treated uh, for a large range of disorders uh, from anxiety and depression to dementia and psychosis. Ivan, a former Marine, said it was absolutely the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced in my life. Well, CBS this morning interviewed a uh, psychiatrist, Dr. Sue Varma, about the importance of the UK study. Now, Dr. Varma explains the biggest impact COVID is having is on people's mental health. She says, we're seeing that 13% of people who have never had psychiatric illnesses before or neurological problems before are getting this for the first time. And we're seeing anxiety anxiety become being the most common, followed by depression, followed by insomnia, substance abuse, and in rare cases, even psychosis. Mm, scary. Well, Dr. Varma says uh, the people that are most at risk are the ones who were the sickest, uh, the hospitalized patients, the ones who were in the ICU. But the scariest part, the people who didn't even have, uh, who didn't even have either COVID symptoms or very mild COVID symptoms that resolved or uh, prior psychiatric known illnesses, they too are at risk for the anxiety and the depression. What had puzzled experts was why was this taking place? Was it due to fear of the virus and hospitalizations or economic worries from the pandemic? Or was it actually a medical situation taking place? Well, the study, Dr. Varma says, picked up that there was something medical going on in the brain. So it wasn't just that people were scared and they were doing it to themselves, mm -hmm. but it would, the, the, the coronavirus was actually affecting the person's brain. In many cases, the people experiencing these effects have had no history at all of mental illnesses, and now some are hearing voices that are causing them to be paranoid or that they should hurt themselves or other people. And I remember as we reported previously in, in, in other broadcasts that the COVID-19 can affect pretty much any organ in, in the body, but it tends to affect the brain the most. And, and, and that obviously leads to a lot of these neurological disorders that we're talking about here. And while these symptoms have been linked to other viruses, they have never been experienced in such large numbers and wide ranges of people. Now, the study compared COVID-19 to the flu and other viral infections and found that the coronavirus was twice as likely to produce an outcome of neuropsychiatric problems. But what's most startling, Dr. Varma says, is, quote, the fact that people can have mild COVID symptoms, mild respiratory, and yet major health, mental health, and major neuropsychiatric problems, end quote. 
Well, Brazil has been dubbed by scientists as experiencing a biological Fukushima in the wake of a new surge in COVID-19 cases. Now, health experts fear the country's number of deaths will surpass that of January's record, which was the highest number of cases. Dr. Miguel Nicolisis told RT News, it's extremely severe in Brazil. It's very critical right now. We are in the middle of a national hospital collapse and exponential growth of new cases in the country. For the first time in Brazilian history in this month, he said April, we may have more deaths in the country than births. Now, this ha has never happened in the entire Brazilian history, he said. Mm, sad. Well, the doctor suggested a national lockdown is needed to help stop the spread, saying, quote, with 4,000 deaths a day, I think the Brazilian people will support that call because we know, uh, because they know, excuse me, we have nothing else to do at this point, end quote. Well, in total, uh, since the start of the pandemic, Brazil's death toll is over 340,000 now. The country is second worst hit, next only to, as we mentioned earlier, India. Uh, but regardless of the alarming death rate surge in new infections and the collapsing health care uh, system, President Bolsonaro says the country will not go on lockdown. Right. And if you remember, many of them are, are opposed to going on lockdown. They don't they don't want to shut the country down and the the economy anymore. Right. Well, um, Brazil isn't the only hard hit area. Our field correspondent, Larry McGee, has been covering this new surge, which now many are calling or referring to the fourth mm -hmm. surge mm -hmm. in the COVID-19 cases. Um, Larry, which area have you been covering and what is the latest? How are the people been have, handling this new fourth surge? Bearing in mind the heavy degree of immunocompromisation, it stands to reason that the nations which are most densely populated are also the nations which will see the most casualties related to the current plague. India houses the largest populace in the world at present, and as such, they have consistently broken records and caught headlines for the behavior of the virus in their country, as well as their rates of infection. They are currently experiencing yet another surge with regard to the latter, which officials are, are attributing to lax social behavior related to prescribed safety measures. As a result of the uptick, major population centers in the country are set to close down bars, shopping centers, and restaurants with an eye towards complete quarantine on the weekends. In Manila, there are now public vaccinations in motion despite the many letdowns it has produced so far. Healthcare workers in the nation are still hanging their hopes on the prospect that it might produce a positive impact concerning the plague and are cheering at the opportunity to be injected. Like as is the case in every other nation, the Philippines are sustaining heavy numbers of new infections and their healthcare system is also under severe strain. The stress and strain of COVID combat is starting to produce high levels of tension among the national leaders who are tasked with the public responsibility of responding to the affliction. In Germany, which is reported to be headed into its third wave, the nation's officials are said to be brawling over newly proposed measures and ideas. In the absence of the appropriate education, the idea of vaccination seems to be the only alternative to hopelessness. Psychologically, that can be the only thing to explain the continued excitement for an option which has been such a horrific failure. There have been severe side effects associated with all three of the jackpot jabs released so far, including that from Johnson & Johnson. Some vaccination sites actually had to pause inoculation due to adverse effects caused by their concoction. Confusion and chaos have become the popular descriptions for vaccination rollouts all across the U.S. All the while, the plague itself is continuing to pick up steam. For IPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan Jeff, back to you. Um, as we reported before, I mean, there is no place on the face of the earth that so far is unscathed by COVID-19, but, uh, you know, m much effort is being put into getting those vaccinations out, which, you know, scientists don't really know if that's really helping or hurting matters, but they're really pushing it, especially here in the United States. Apparently, President Biden is uh, reaching his goal of that 100 million in his first 100 days, like he mentioned before. Right, and as we talked about the vaccinations, they're not even sure that this new, these new right, variants, right. that it's even effective mm -hmm. against them. So these vaccinations, even though they're greatly pushing them, don't seem to be 
helping all that much as we are witnessing this new fourth surge. That's right. Well, as migration into the U.S. continues to grow, with many being uh, unaccompanied minors, officials are struggling on where to house them and what to do with them. Over 19,000 children crossed the border of the United States into the United States in just March alone. Um, Kumpur, a Guatemalan town in the highlands, uh, was hit by devastating floods last fall due to two back-to-back -back hurricanes. Well, these storms and flooding displaced more than 300,000 Guatemalans. And one mother uh, who spoke to CBS Evening News said she doesn't know what to do. She hopes that one day her son will be a professional. But the floods destroyed schools and crops, taking away what most depend on to earn a living. Well, in her own town, she knows of at least six families that have taken the chance to cross the U.S. border, even though the borders are closed. Well, so far, 60,000 Guatemalans have been apprehended at the southwest border. Now, another single mother of three in the same town has made the decision to head to the U.S., even though it means leaving behind her three sons, with the youngest being only two years old. Now, she said she doesn't know if she'll be able to come back and hold them one day, and her oldest son, processing his mother's words for the first time, uh, broke down in tears as he realized what this meant for him and his siblings, that he really might not there is the possibility he might not see his mom again. Yeah, and that's, that's hard to take either way it goes if the parent leaves the child back home in Guatemala or if the parent sends the child to the United States without them. It, it makes it difficult on both the parent and the child. Absolutely. Well, Aurora, uh, who also who spoke to CBS Evening News, uh, said that she plans to leave in a week to head to the United States, a, a journey that could take a month to travel over 1,600 miles to get from the town there in Guatemala all the way to Houston, Texas in the U.S. Well, Russia is crying out as the U.S. is trying everything in its power to kill the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Now, the U.S. plans to team up with a former Ukrainian gas executive to attempt to derail the gas line project. While the U.S. is planning to work with other countries aiding in the construction of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said, even a structure like the Atlantic Council already publishes material criticizing the U.S.'s absolute deadlock strategy over Russia, which does not produce any results in terms of the goals that were declared when sanctions were imposed. Hmm. Well, the U.S. claims that Russia will use the pipeline as an economic and political weapon, while Russia says that the pipeline just makes economic sense and makes the task of getting uh, natural gas to Europe more fluid. Well, the U.S. also placed economic sanctions on the project and companies doing business with it. Uh, Russia says that it can only rely on itself and that the U.S. and its partners are unreliable. Well, Taiwan had a visitor from China, but it wasn't President Ping. It was a drone flying close to the country in open waters. Now, the Taiwanese head of Ocean Affairs Council said, if it enters a restricted zone, it will be handled under the rules. If we need to open fire, then we fire. Well, even though China has been flying daily near the semi-autonomous territory of Taiwan, their aircraft have not entered into any restricted airspace, which extends six kilometers off the coast. Uh, the island of Pradas is the closest piece of land Taiwan has to Hong Kong, while numerous other countries are laying claim to tiny islands in the South China Sea, uh, all while the U.S. continues to conduct naval exercise in the area, so a lot of activity there. Well, Saurabh Gupta, a specialist with the Asian, Asia Pacific International Relations Policy said, the reason the U.S. conducts exercises in the area is to mark its presence, reassure allies, and to deter any adventurous moves that might come from the Chinese side. Well, the thing that really irritates China, he continued, is when the U.S. conducts freedom of navigation operations within what China claims to be its own territorial seas, 
because China demands that there be prior notification before entering the waters, while the U.S. has a different interpretation of the law, creating legal tension between the two countries. Well, briefly here in the Middle East, uh, the uh, Israel, Israel, the country Israel, is urging world leaders uh, not to revive the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran amidst the restarting of talks between the U.S. and Iran in Vienna. And I remember the Biden administration was saying that they would like to get some things restarted with Iran. Um, a forward intelligence vessel of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard was struck in the Red Sea in a commando attack attributed to Israel and in an attempted coup in Jordan. Uh, it was averted uh, as the former crown prince, Hassan bin Hassan, repledged his allegiance to King Abdullah II and his crown prince, Hussein bin Abdullah. Well, the Ukrainian president visited troops in Donbass, where Russia, where Russia's military has a buildup along the border after weeks of fighting with, with militia-backed separatists. Now, President Zelensky said, there's an escalation indeed in the Donbass region. We can see it. Uh, servicemen can see it. Commanders in chief and other commanders can see that. We understand that our boys are targeted by snipers and uh, so far 26 have been killed, he, he said. Now our servicemen will do anything they can to defend our country and to hold ceasefire. Uh, but when our soldiers are attacked and when there are casualties, it is clear to everyone that the army responds. Now, Russian military is building up along the border and pro-Russian rebel fighters are taking up position in urban areas. Both sides seemed primed for war. Well, Jen Psaki, the uh, White House press secretary, said the United States is increasingly concerned by recent escalating uh, Russian aggressions in eastern Ukraine, including Russian troop movements on Ukraine's border. Russia now has more troops on the border with Ukraine than at any time since 2014, and five uh, Ukrainian soldiers, she said, have been killed this week alone. Now, these are deeply concerning signs. Well, even German Chancellor Angela Merkel urged President Putin to pull back in a recent phone call. Now, leaders in Moscow warn leaders in Kiev uh, they see moves to, spe to speed up Ukraine's membership to NATO as provocative, and the Russia and uh, Russia might have to step in to defend Russian speakers in the East once again. And it, it seems like everywhere there's some type of uh, conflict uh, with these big superpowers, which were reported on before, uh, Russia and China. The United States is somewhere involved with that. Uh, United States supplying, uh, you know, uh, uh, resources to Ukraine and teaming up with Ukraine also to try to uh, stave off that Nord Stream 2 pipeline, as well as the activities that are going on in the South China Sea and then working with Taiwan. And so there's a lot of activity building up, but all this tension is definitely leading us closer to war. And as, uh, as we just reported, you know, both sides is um, being primed. They're primed for war. And that, uh, as you mentioned, is it taking place in many different parts of the world. And it's going to draw in many different countries, as you mentioned uh, there, you know, the U.S. supplying Ukraine and so forth. So a lot more players involved. And, you know, these, uh, these moves that are made, um, very provocative, you know, as, as we've reported. And it's really only a matter of time until something blows and somebody makes a move and, you know, that war is started. And the thing that's a little bit scary about that is, as we just reported, with COVID-19, one of the side effects yeah, is mental. neurological disorders, mental disorders. So you get somebody who's in charge of making decisions to start war or has the power to press the button to launch a nuclear weapon. There we go. Yeah, excellent point. Well, if you'd like to learn more about these stories, contact the House of Yahweh when you do. Don't forget to request your free copy of the monthly newsletter and Prophetic Word magazine, Here's How. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas, 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites by going to Yahweh.com. 
You can also go to yeshuahawkins.com or yahwehsbranch.com. If you would like to visit our website, you can do so by going to ypnnews.com. If you'd like to email the House of Yahweh, you can do so by emailing info at yahweh.com. For any international calls, the number should be on your screen right now. You can call that number. And if you haven't already done so, check out the Yisrael Says program by going to yisraelsays.com and the Ask Yisrael program by going to askyisrael.com. Well, in society, there is obviously one of two ways to go about solving problems, the right way and the wrong way. Well, if you'd like to find out about the right way, stay tuned because up next is Yisrael Hawkins teaching you the right way and how to go about it. For all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thank you for watching.